Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today, we are looking at chaos and confusion when it comes to trading and investing into your favorite cryptocurrencies. So, you know what to do. If you love the sound of that, let me know. Hit the like button down below. Bell notification icon after you've hit the subscribe button. Go on and do that. Let's move on. And follow me on Instagram and Twitter where I'm doing daily Q&As in Instagram stories and news updates on Twitter. All right, guys, let's dive into this chaos and confusion around cryptos, altcoins, Bitcoin, and how to record numbers and understand what is going on out there when it comes to our investments. In today's video, I've got a ton of charts to go through. We're going to look at percentages from highs to lows, lows to highs, and understanding what it is that we have in our portfolios. But first, let's take a look at the market cap, 1.77 trillion. We have fallen from 2.55 down to about 1.3, and now sitting comfortably around 1.7. Nothing is confirmed yet. That, at least that's my take on the market. We aren't out of this uh, bear market look of a bottom, but I am uh, still bullish long-term as I've maintained throughout this period. The thing that I haven't been bullish on is the Bitcoin values of altcoins, which have been overpriced. In terms of the dollar value, different story. But end of the day, my goal is to stack sats, which means just increase my Bitcoin position. So that's what I'm focused on. Bitcoin's at three quarters of a trillion, Ethereum a third of a trillion. And then we go down the list to our other favorites, Binance, Cardano, Doge is still hanging on by a thread. XRP has dropped, Polkadot 22. We now see USDC make its uh, debut, I believe, into the top 10. Maybe it's the second time, I don't remember, but it's a it's a new stablecoin entrance into the top 10, which basically shows us that, look, we're in a period where people are unsure. We've got a lot of stablecoins in the top 10. We have two, and now we have three in the top 20. Solana is still uh, coming back quite strong at 17% today. Matic has been the big winner, and we'll talk about that in just a moment as well. Uh, Solana also looking good. ADA has been looking very good. It's it's moving back up in to the rankings. Let's take a look at our first chart. Now, this is probably one you're unfamiliar with. This is a NASDAQ. I'm looking at this. This is usually compared to the crypto market quite often. You know, it's like it's new technology. Let's see what happened to NASDAQ and the boom and the bust. And here we are again. We've got another boom going on with the NASDAQs. This is all the tech stocks. I'm just looking at patterns in here as well, and these patterns apply to pretty much any market. What we're currently seeing at these lows on Bitcoin is a little bit of it. We're getting a little bit of a round here, but we got a lot of strong volume back on the 18th, uh, sorry, the 19th of May. We've been following this. We've been tracking it. This was weak. Remember how important the volume was here as we began to climb up? Volume just was not getting us through to those next high levels, and then we've dropped. So onto the, uh, so back to the Nasdaq. I'm just looking for patterns here where we can start to see a bit of a climb out of lows. And even if we get a breakdown like we saw here, so this is a NASDAQ back in the early days, in the early 90s, 1990, broke to new highs. We had a crash, broke to new highs, crashed again, taking out these lows, and then it climbed its way back to new highs again. So this was an extreme period. Now, we can't use the, the same percentages because this is a different market. It's it's not Bitcoin uh, where it's like international and there is a hell of a lot of money piling in and out quite easily. This is a regulated exchange. So it's a little different when it comes to these percentages. But you've got a solid 30% drop, which is massive in the traditional markets. And then we see a really good recovery where we've got a move up and then a higher low, another higher low, another higher low breaks here, but we've got another one here, and which is above or sitting on top of these old highs. That's the sort of pattern that we are looking for when it comes to Bitcoin right now. So uh, that's what I wanted to bring up here with the NASDAQ. This can be found on any other charts, but it was just, I was looking at NASDAQ and I found it here. So I thought I would bring that up as an example. Basically, you can see what's going on here. We've had a breakdown of these levels. Everyone has been scared out of their minds. If we get another breakdown, maybe we do, maybe we don't. We don't know. No one knows for sure whether this is the bull run back on or it's just a relief rally up into the mid to high 40s before we take another crash again. But so far, the 30s have been holding and these look pretty good. Uh, what we want to see is some good volume and then also if we do get pullbacks, that it begins to find support again. We want to see that support continue to come in at higher levels. That's pretty much what we have for Bitcoin. So. So far, it's looking good. We just need to see those pullbacks and the support 
continue to build. That's what I'm waiting for. Bitcoin dominance, on the other hand, has remained stable. It has had that pullback. So you can start to see that this is happening. So there's the there's the first level. Now we're here. Now we're back here at the 43.5%. This doesn't confirm that we do go up and break these highs yet, but this is what I've been preparing for. And the reason why I didn't go all into stable coins, but I consolidate it into some of the major positions, in particular Bitcoin, because that's my plan. If it's not part of your plan and your plan is to only stack fiat currency, then you need to just be looking at the USD charts. Maybe don't look so much at the BTC stuff, but if BTC is going up and the altcoins are going down against BTC, then the less riskier option is, of course, Bitcoin. So, so far I'm seeing this. Hopefully we get another leg out and we start to make our way up. This is my first level. We talked about these levels yesterday, around the uh, 48, then to 50s. We've got all the alerts in here. So uh, go back and check that video out, but that's pretty much where we're sitting for Bitcoin. So moving on to where the numbers are, and let's look at Matic first. Now for Matic, this is one that I did not take. Easy, okay, I didn't take it. But the, a big reason to this is, I can't replicate how I'm going to trade Matic it's, it's a fantastic project. I am, uh, you know, I, I talk about it and I think it's great. I'm looking for a better entry. This is a fantastic entry. Don't get me wrong. That's a fantastic entry. But no one could predict that we could would have gone from that low to where we currently are. And this is against Bitcoin, against the dollar chart. It's even bigger. I don't believe anyone could predict that we would go from that low to that high because otherwise, why wouldn't all the other cryptos do the same? Why not ADA? Why wouldn't it go from its low to its high? The other thing to look at is how far did it drop from its high? It came down about 70 odd percent. So looking at this little chart I've got up here, these are some of the um, the trades that I missed. Matic, 210%. Amazing. That's from the bottom to the top. Remember that. So this is sort of the confusion and the chaos that I've been talking about. People are looking at these as trades and like, why didn't I get on that? Well, why didn't you talk about it? I'm saying, well, if you bought the exact bottoms and have sold the cryptocurrency, then you've made this sort of profit. Same thing with VET. These are all the projects that I'm interested in, what I'm um, looking to gain. And I've taken one as an example here, and this is uh, Matic. It lost 64% of its BTC value. So this is all relative from, from its top. So from the top to the bottom, 64% down. Cardano, it lost 38% from its top. So it lost less, which means it's going to bounce back less, generally speaking, when we're in this confusion and chaos period. So even though you've got this huge gain, you had a huge loss to begin with. And so this is how new investors who don't understand maths and numbers and how all these things come together, believe they've missed out on a massive gain when in fact they're trading a less, well, maybe they're in a less riskier position like ADA or Bitcoin. You know, it's it's gone down less. And that just means that the, the how far it moves up might be less as well. It's all relative. And if you lose track of that, then you really get sucked into the confusion and the chaos uh, games that are played between what's going on out there, who's got the better trades, what's going on with uh, how much profit someone's making. At the end of the day, it's not profit until it's sold out as well. And so when we look at Matic, we have to then hope if you're chasing these pumps already, you're chasing a pump after a massive dump. Now back up here, you, now you have to hope that Matic is going to repeat something similar and get a double from this point in a market which is looking, it's unsure. The market is really unsure. I can't say it's completely bearish because everything's popping off, but you can't say it's completely bullish because we haven't gone to new highs and we're not making higher lows just yet. So we're in an uncertain period. So now you have to hope that this is going to gain up to five bucks. It, it most certainly could, but I want a plan that is repeatable. And I don't see a way to repeat this trade of buying this exact low and selling this exact top. There's, for me and my experience level, I don't have an exact plan on that and I can't see how I can replicate that. And that's the most important thing if you're going to be around long term. Listening to someone online just saying, Manic is the best thing ever or listening to, or saying, uh, Vet is the best thing ever. You gotta buy Vet. How do you repeat that moving forward? You might be a one hit wonder and then you and then you bust. You know, how do you get out? Do you take 100%? Do you take 1,000%? This all comes back to having a plan. So if I move over to Sol, uh, actually, I've got Sol up here. Sol is down a lot as well, but we're now starting to recover. But the recovery is is still low volume as we move out of the low. 
in terms of the dollar value, it was down a hell of a lot. It's like Matic, down a ton, 67%. It did not bounce back as much as Matic, but we've seen a bounce. We've seen 80%, not 200%, but most of these things have bounced back. And that's why it looked like it's a relief rally at the moment. Now, if the dollar values don't hold and Bitcoin has another crash, then their, their BTC value is probably going to fall as well. So I'm out of pocket more. So I'm just doing that as a, as a protection. You know, I want to protect myself uh, in the event that Bitcoin does fall again. I've still got some exposure to the market in case the market goes up, but just in case it doesn't, then I'm still protected. So for Solana against Bitcoin, it has now risen again 65% after its initial drop of 60%. So 60% down to get back to the high, it needs to go, if I remember my maths correctly, 150%. Yes. So you need to get 150% from that low in order just to get back to where it was from the top after a 60% drop. So remember those figures. I've put them in uh, the playlist of cryptocurrency videos about exit strategies and what to buy with $1,000. All that sort of stuff is going to help you understand the maths behind uh, your trades and whether it's a worthwhile investment or not. Should I buy something now? Should I not? Those things are going to help so much. So let's look at the total market caps as well. This is the crypto total market cap. Uh, we are sitting at 1.74 trillion. We hit a low of 1.2 trillion. Now, if we use our fibs, our major level we're looking for is the 50%. So we're at a bottom here in March, which is the COVID low. The top is at 2.55. That level is 1.3 trillion. So we have held above that and we've bounced from it. So keep that number in mind if you see the total market cap uh, start to fall back and begin to close and build levels beneath the 1.34 trillion that that approximate level around 1.34 trillion that's going to be a, a weakening sign and we're not far from that now in case it does happen we're at 1.74 that's about 20 odd 25 percent away from that point so that's what we don't want to see but we definitely do want to see the market begin to form uh, higher lows up here which then tells us early on we don't have to wait for the market to break the highs we can start to see that potentially we are moving back into a bull phase the other thing I had here was a monthly chart. I shared this with the, the Investor Accelerator group, and this is just showing where we currently sit compared to the previous runs. We have done eight months up, had one month reversal uh, previous to that, and now we're looking at a potential another month reversal. You know, we need some sort of pullback. We've done eight months straight up. So let me put that on log. When you look at it like that, it all looks like it's falling into place, really. We had from the low in 2015, 17 months up. We did have a reversal here early on. Two months back, 17 months up, 11 months back, six up, nine down, five up, one down. So in terms of this stage, it looks like we're early on, but it looks like we will lengthen out this period at the moment. We're only one month down. So we get one, two, three months down. I'm not overly concerned. We've seen it all before. We've seen a couple of months here. We've seen one month already. So this isn't going to be an answer overnight. This is just something that we're going to keep tracking uh, so that we can get an understanding of where we currently sit. Here we go. Let's bring that back to 100. So yeah, around that 1.33 trillion. So that's the, the 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 low that I am looking at here for the total market cap. Total two. Now this is everything excluding Bitcoin. So log. Again, we're sitting above our uh, support lines. I've I'm using these on the log scale just to give us a bit of a support and resistance. I'm not tied to these, but they're just giving me a guide at the moment major high, more major highs before we got the breakout on the log scale, bounced off the log, bounced off the log, up again, we've come back to test it and we're only just slightly above it. Again, with this orange line, it's uh, a log resistance. And so if we get finally get a breakthrough of that log resistance, that is where we go absolutely chaotic. That's the, that's the level there. If we can get above it again, then we have a nice, massive altcoin season. We want to get to it. So that's what I've got for um, total two. I'm keeping a track of that to see what's going on with the altcoins overall. Is the money flowing into them or are we just getting a little bit of a, a wind down? As you can see here, we've got a lot of buying come back through the 700 billion level. So I'm going to keep an eye on that as well. Vet, we are bouncing back. Big bounce back. But remember what we just talked about. This is all relative. Look how far this tanked. 70% down from its high. It has to bounce back. It's bounced back 140%, maybe a little more, maybe 145%, but it's come a long way down. Let's look at ADA. So ADA Bitcoin. ADA Bitcoin from its high 
38%. So half, uh, half of what uh, VET was doing. But the bounce back has been obviously a lot less. So 45%. So in terms of a trade, if you're buying VET at the bottom for the first time, fantastic. You've done amazingly well. But if you're holding it from the top, then you get the drop of 84%. And then you get a bounce back of 140%. It looks amazing. But really, this is the area to keep in mind. It's top to where we currently are. And ADA is only 11, if you want, call it 11 and 12% from its all-time high. VET BTC, on the other hand, all-time high to where it currently is, is 28% down. 28% down. So from the close to the high, you still need another 40% to get there. Whereas for ADA, to get back to its high from where it currently is, it only needs 13%. So I'm not saying it's going to get there. I'm just saying look at the risk that you are using instead of just, oh, that was a fantastic trade and I missed it. You know, don't worry about that. That's the, the chaos and the confusion that is caused in a flash crash, in a possibly short-term bearish outlook on the market. So just keep that in mind if you guys are going through your, uh, your trades and looking at different cryptos and feeling down about not picking up something and you know it's done 200 percent remember you need to have bought it at that low and sold it at that current price to get that return the other thing is look at what uh what you were holding and you don't know what these other people were holding beforehand maybe they were holding everything maybe they bought everything at the top saw an 80 percent drop maybe they had some more money and they put it in it's all relative to what is going on in the market and it just depends on what your plan is about whether you are a high risk or medium risk moderate risk or a little bit lower risk and you're trying to diversify uh, or at least consolidate, sorry, into cryptos which are lower risk. And for me, I see those as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, potentially Link as well. And there's a few others, but just for an easy look at a portfolio, that's pretty much the way I see the market. So I hope you found some value from that and it's been able to uh, remove some of the confusion, some of the chaos that goes on, especially when these dips occur. You know, there's numbers flying everywhere. There's a whole lot of red dumping. Uh, and then all of a sudden, there's a whole lot of green growing up uh, on the on the charts again. You've got 15% flying off and 20 odd percent going elsewhere. And you're just like, I'm missing out on everything. Why didn't I get these? Uh, sometimes it's just easier just to step away and not worry about it. Because at the end of the day, you just don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, especially on a short term outlook where we see just daily bars moving up as a potential relief rally, the volume's drying up, maybe we get a pushback, maybe we go up and test some more support levels. Nothing is confirmed yet. We need to see some higher lows and then a break of those highs and a continued move up with some volume. That's what, at least that's what I'm waiting for. Thank you once again, guys. Smash the like button if you found some value from the video. Remember to subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. We have a newsletter going out tomorrow, free newsletter. Drop your email address down below. We're going to look at uh, stocks, Coinbase and Tesla. We're looking at cryptos. So stay tuned for that and the property cycle as well, whereas we run into our peak in the mid 2020s. If you're not into property, it's still important to understand what the cycle is doing overall because that is where the biggest money is. Okay, so that's going to help a hell of a lot and keep you out of all of the, the noise and the confusion when it comes to the world should be crashing, that sort of nonsense, uh, doomsday stuff. So, once again, like the video up. I'll catch you guys at the next video or on Twitter and Instagram. Links are down below. Ada Stake Pool. Link is down below for that too. Make sure you join join up for that. We've had our first block and got a really good reward, somewhere around 7%. Looking good. Catch you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done. <laughs>